Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Mark from Solo Games. So today we're gonna to talk about what's next. So as a lot of you guys know, 30th anniversary came and went, not with a bane, but with a whimper. Um, I'm still firmly in the belief camp that they pulled the sale early. I know there's a lot of people who are now doing like, oh, you know, what if it actually sold out? What if five whales bought the thing? Yeah, well, we'll address that in a different video. It's really not the point of this video, but we'll talk about that sometime in the future, I promise. Um, but I think I was surprised. I was um, I was telling my Uber driver that basically this guy doesn't even play Magic. He doesn't even know what's going on. I said, have you heard of a game called Magic the Gathering? He's like, uh, sure. <laughs> and then so I told him like, um, I think what really surprised me was collective negative um, negativity actually affected the Wizards' bottom line. I, I didn't think that was possible. Um, maybe I had very little faith in this new Web 3.0 generation. But um, yeah, I guess we can make change by making more videos. So you know what, everyone out there watching my video, go make your own video. Highly recommend it. It's really fun actually, uh, bashing other people. It's great. Okay. Um, again, um, I think this is a great first step because it is, has sent a very clear signal to wizards. But my fear is that they might actually have learned the wrong lesson. So what is next? Well, obviously, we all know that uh, we'll figure out what's going to happen at Q4 or 2022 annual earnings call. We'll know what exactly happens that's likely to come next year. And I will make a video on it as soon as those earning calls drop. Um, and sooner than that, if we see heads rolling, obviously, that is probably a sign that something did go wrong because they wouldn't fire a bunch of people if, um, especially people up top, if there's nothing going wrong, right? Obviously. Um yeah. Um, and if one of those heads starts talking, man, we are in for a treat. I hope one of the people that get fired really start talking, break out, break the silence, talk about what happened. Um, and the funny thing is Blake's comment uh, on that stupid stream was a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, he literally told people don't buy the product and people didn't buy the product. And guess what? wonder if he's going to get some flack for that, for saying that, or for, you know, at least communicating that way. Again, he's he's kind of one of the marketing people. He's one of the face of magic, right? There's him, Gavin, uh, Maro, and it's it's probably a dumb idea now in retrospect to have said anything like that. Um, but hey, you know, he, he, he wants to say it. that's that's what the hill he wants to die on. I guess that's where it is. Okay, so best case scenario going forward is Watsi understands what they've done, that they've, they've pissed everybody off. There's nobody happy about this thing, right? And um, there are some sacred cows that just can't be slaughtered. You can't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't worry about it. Leave it be. Um, this might finally open their eyes. Again, just so you understand, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like crafting out the best possible scenario. This is likely not what's going to happen, at least not in every single form. But this is what I'm hoping for. Probably a lot of people, too. They finally opens their eyes, um, take off their blinders and see what other TCGs are doing. If you watch, you know, or if you are following all the prices on the market, I mean, Pokemon's doing great. Uh, if you bought boxes in 2021 of Pokemon, then you're probably doing fine right now, which is crazy, right? You're probably up almost 100% to 200%. Um, so like trip, like doubling or tripling your uh, cost from the purchase. Um, Pokemon's doing great. Flesh and Blood is doing great. Apparently MetaZoo is doing great. I still don't like the game, but hey, man, if, you know, for the people who are investing in these kind of things, look, I don't want people to lose money, right? And that's the thing. If they want to take the risk, obviously, um, you should be rewarded for your risk, especially when a company holds your destiny. It's, uh, it's kind of on them to not screw it up. Um, yeah, and basically, if Wizard realizes that not only that they've been doing making bad decisions, that also their underhanded scummy tactics uh, don't work in the current internet age where information travels faster uh, than their pump and dumps. Pretty straightforward, right? Like, yeah, hopefully that's the message that they're getting. Uh, and, and this will then cause them to make actual adjustments, right? That will boost their, you know, um, sales numbers. Maybe take a hit in Q4, make, when you make those adjustments, cutting back on print runs, cutting back on product, making higher quality product overall, uh, both in design, but also in the actual printing. I, I hate to see all these like poor, shitty booster boxes, with, you know, poorly cut corners, misprints and whatever. It's really sad. Um, but gradually in 2023, build up that, you know, customer confidence again, build up the rapport, uh, goodwill with the customers to bring back a portion of the market that you lost. Because here's the reality, they're losing market share now. 
Um, a lot of players are just looking at other options because it, look, if they keep going down this path, then what's the point, right? A lot of players just don't want to keep doing this. Um, the ones who are, who are staying in Magic, as far as I'm hearing, they're looking at older boxes. In fact, I'm going to do a Ultimate Masters draft this weekend. So, you know, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. We're not opening up Brothers War or whatever. Uh, we're going to do something in the past. So the good products from the past, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and it's smarter to do this now rather than later. Again, the, the longer they delay, the longer they go down this path, they will permanently lose fans rather than temporarily. And this is the key too. It's like, it's not just, it, they have to understand that longer they don't do anything about this, the longer, well, you know, people are going to have liked, enjoyed, spent money, devoted, dedicated to other games, and they're not coming back. I mean, you know, just in the comments, a lot of people were asking me about different card games out there, Rise, Sorcery, you know, all this other stuff. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, cautious about um, Kickstarters, Kickstarter games. I was one of the original... Um, backers of the woven games shadow era for everybody who, anybody who knows about that game you know shout out to you um i think the artwork in that game is amazing but what i didn't realize and i should have realized was that that game plays really well on a mobile device where you don't have to track anything but in paper where you have to put counters and like plus damage my it's it's a nightmare it's just impossible almost impossible to play so that's why the paper game never took off which is fine like hearthstone would also be a terrible game to play in paper because all the transforming and things becoming other things it's just really hard to track in paper that's what i like about magic every round the damage and you know those things kind of resets so it's easier right um that's the best case scenario worst case scenario though is watsi looks at this and says okay we failed on this product but they push and try something different um, what are some of the options here right they just realize hey this is the wrong product but that doesn't stop them from trying something else um, the different options here is like, look, maybe they start in engineering another scummy way maybe to sell a different product. Like, uh, what about better cards? How about this? $10,000 for actual beta reprints, right? So a beta pack, basically $10,000. I know it sounds crazy, but hey, look, see where we're coming from already, right? Uh, maybe, you know, you spent you spend $10,000 to get a beta draft booster. Reprinted. Could be, right? Who knows? Uh, or, or like what the could baseball card or sports card did golden packs like the best players in the most fancy frames whatever a pack of these sell them for 10k 20k 100k you know you, you could really push this number up the problem of course is it's how you control the print run like if you print a golden pack and you sell 10 of them i think it's fine it doesn't change anything right um you're gonna get a lot of flack people are gonna hate you because you're selling a hundred thousand dollar like cards but at the same time like Maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't really affect anything. The problem becomes when you overprint it and the people who bought it thinking this is a long-term investment, thinking this is like something that they can hold price or goes up in price, tanks. You're going to lose those people. And here's the reality. Who's going to dump, who's going to have confidence to dump another 100K on you if you keep consistently do this over and over again? Best example you can think about this is like, look at stores. Stores are already backing off orders on Fire Exit All is One because again, you've lost the confidence, right? Why would a store buy the box for like $95 from distribution and realize you're just gonna dump these boxes on for $80 on Amazon in about two months? They can't sell those boxes, right? If they bought it for 95, there's no way they're gonna be able to, you know, then turn around and try to sell it back to their customers at 80. Why would they do this? So once you lose confidence, your customers, you know, stores, whatever, the people who are giving you like big money for these things, um, yeah, you're gonna lose the whole entire market. So, yeah, so here's the problem, right? This, you know, stores are not gonna take those hits. Um, the other thing is continue to hang out in their echo chambers. You know this is happening at Wizards where whenever something happens, a failure happens, you know, I talked about this in my mistakes video. There's a couple ways you can deal with that. The wrong way is to say, oh, it wasn't bad. It was not a mistake. Um, it was actually something else. They're the problem. I'm not the problem. There's nothing wrong with me. You guys are not buying my product because you are stupid. You're dumb. You don't understand this. You don't like my TV show because you are you know, racist, sexist, whatever these things. These are things that like, I think a lot of industry is kind of stuck in, in the current state. So hopefully that's not where they are, but you know, there's always a chance of that, right? Um, and then of course, lastly, they just keep doing this until it's so bad that their stock tanks so much, they just got up, get bought out by some other company, right? I think 
Rudy's mentioned Amazon. I'm thinking like it could be really anybody. Um, if you look at the digital stuff they do, right, between Magic Online and uh, Arena, these are cash cows of theirs as well, and they probably make a lot more money if they're just independent. So what if a video game company picks them up, like Blizzard or, you know, Microsoft or whatever, right? So you can imagine this thing could just be a company owned by someone else at some point. What do I think is going to happen? Um, Honestly, I don't know. I think there's just not enough data to know what happened. I mean, this 30th anniversary is really a... Uh, I've never seen anything like this from, from Wizards, right? So maybe I'm hoping they can turn things around. Maybe that's being too optimistic. But I think for them to turn things around, they have to change the people at Wizard. And that's the issue. The, a lot of the people who are at the top who are really having a lot of power, they're... I don't know if they're going to change, you know, and, and so you can't, if you can't change their mentality, their mindset, then you have to change them, right? And I know they're getting a lot of investor pressure, for sure. Investor, board member, there's a lot of pressure. You can't lose 40% of your, you know, uh, net worth, um, valuation, stock, whatever, uh, without major pressure from investors, from board board members, etc. So there's tons of pressure to say, hey, you got to perform. And this magic product failing is a great thing because that is going to affect change. So I'm just saying maybe like either in Wizards, someone high up is giving the wrong message, right? So maybe this is like, you know, uh, Chris Cox giving the wrong message to his people about what kind of product he wants to see. Or it's the people who are running their individual departments, not understanding how to run them properly. And then again, you know, having echo chambers with each other, with, you know, whatever, just saying, oh yeah, we're doing so great. We're awesome. This, you know, the pads on each other's backs is amazing, right? So look, here's the reality. Um, if we want to see Watchy change, um, there will have to be a change of the old cars. People either at the top are going to have to go or a few people who are running the boat um, in the wrong direction will have to go, right? So, so who do I think those people are? I'm just going to start naming names, right? Uh, we got up first, uh, Blake, don't buy it, Rasmussen. So he's part of like marketing communications. Um, yeah, I don't think he understands how to talk to his constituents, his, his, uh, player base. Um, saying things like don't buy the product. If you, it's not for you, it's kind of like stupid, especially when the community or, the, you know, the content creator side has already echoed that same sentiment before we've been saying the product is not for you. He literally repeated that line, which is so dumb. You're from Wizards. We're saying this because we think you're being stupid. You're literally confirming what we're saying. That's that's the worst communication I could have thought. It's like just some brain brain dead comment, right? Maybe he watched the videos and he really agreed with it. So um, we got you know Gavin Secret Layer Verhe. Like, look, Secret Layers are cool. I know there's a lot of people who really like them, but I'm gonna be honest. They're they're just there's just too many Secret Layers. Um, and the way that they've ran this thing again, it's like. You know what, what Watsi does all the time over dilution of a good idea or product. When you have a good idea, they always keep milking that cow until the cow is dead. And I don't know why they do this because they've done it so many times. They should have realized this is not good. We shouldn't do this. But either they're out of create, creative ideas where they can kind of vary what they're doing over different sets, or they just don't understand what they're actually doing, right? Maybe that's what happens. Um, anyways, Gavin Verhe. Yeah. And then this is the big one. Um, Mark, Black Border, everything, Rosewater. I think part of the problem now is that while Morrow is really good at communi communicating with the community, he's been, you know, part of the whole thing. I think one of the challenges, especially in the recent um, podcasts of his, which I actually listen to, I, I respect the man a lot. I think a lot of his, um, like his, his, um, his 20 lessons in 20 years, great GDC, uh, GDC uh, pr uh, presentation if you have never seen it. I think his he is a great designer and I think he is really creative. I think though at some point, um, maybe it's the, the echo chamber, chamber he's in, maybe it's just he, he's kind of weak and gets pushed around. Mark doesn't seem like a person who is um, confident who's going to stand up for himself he does feel to me like someone who's going to get pushed around and maybe that's where the problem is is that he's getting pushed around and people are pushing him in different directions to make more money and he's just caving so unfortunately if that's what you're doing then you got to go um, and lastly his manager and old pro player 
uh, AA Ron, what the hell is going on, Forcicle? Um, yeah, what a what a brain dead comment to ask about. Why is standard uh, not popular? You're the designer. You're you're responsible for this R and D team. You should understand why. You shouldn't have to ask a community this. You should have came out tell, telling everyone. Here's what we see. Here's what we're gonna do about it. I mean, even Blizzard, who is basically in a shit house every single release of every single expansion now, knows how to communicate these things, right? We were wrong. We designed this this way. We made a mistake. We're gonna change it. He doesn't even say that much. He says, I don't know why it's going bad. Huh, that's weird. No, we, we can't have these kind of people working at Wizards. Um, and that's the problem. And maybe it's not them. Maybe it's somebody high up saying, you gotta make money. And of course they're just scrambling because they're, they're, they used to be you know goody boys who, who design things and it's all for the, the, the benefit of the game. And they didn't understand that the benefit of the game, how, that, how to turn that into a monetization model. So now there's a lot of pressure and maybe they're just making mistakes because they're being pushed in directions that they're not comfortable in. Could be. But if that's true, then, then you gotta make sure the, the head above them rolls because somebody has to go. And I think there's got to be more than one person at Wizards who has to go because I don't trust that this current team can turn the ship around. And that's the problem. So. Peace.